The evening before his girlfriend's birthday, Kevin arrived at her office quite late to decorate her desk. He pretended to be a pizza delivery guy to get past the security, but when Kevin finished with the decorations, he realized that the building had already been closed oh, no. and all the guards had left. Kevin found a locker with several tangled wires. Help the guy out. If he just opens the door, the alarm will go off and the police will arrive immediately. One wire turns off the alarm, another is responsible for fire detectors, and the third one turns off the cameras. Which wire should Kevin cut? The green one. Can you figure out what animal is hiding behind this pattern? That's right, it's a dog. Now, let's make this task a bit more complicated. What animal is hiding here? That's right, it's a panda. Police officers are chasing a thief who has just robbed a jewelry store, but he has managed to hide in a women's clothing store and put on a female outfit. Help the officers identify the robber among these women. This elegant lady on the right is wearing the same sneakers as the thief did during his escape. Look at this picture. Can you see any animal? It's a crocodile. Great job! Eric got caught in the rain and decided to hide in an abandoned house. But as soon as he stepped inside, the front door disappeared. A mysterious voice said, The only way to get out of here is to push open one of these doors. But the first door is covered with dangerous acid. The second door is unbearably hot. If he touches the third door, he'll get an electric shock. Which door should Eric choose? The guy needs to take off his rubber boots and put them on his hands. Then he can push the third door. Rubber will protect him from electricity. There are many different animals in this picture. But can you spot identical pairs? This couple of birds, these hares, and the owls. Other creatures don't have identical twins. Look at this picture very attentively. What do you see? Is it a spiral or several concentric circles? These are black and white concentric circles. You probably saw a spiral, but this is just an optical illusion. Try to squint your eyes or move your finger around any of the circles. Daniel came home after work and realized his house had been burgled. The police suggested that the robbery probably took place around lunchtime. The officers questioned four ladies who lived next door. All of them told the police that they had had a road trip together. They had to stop to change a flat tire on their way back from another city, so they got home late at night. But then, the police officer decided to interrogate the ladies separately in different rooms. They heard their answers and arrested them immediately. What question did the officers ask? The women said they had to deal with a flat tire on their way home. When the officers questioned each of them separately, they asked each lady which tire had been damaged and their answers didn't match. Supermarket manager Mike was counting daily revenue late at night. 
Suddenly, the fluorescent lamp above his head began to blink. Mike climbed on a chair to fix it. But when he touched the lamp, he burned his hand, fell from the chair, and lost consciousness for a while. When he came around, the guy noticed that all the money had been stolen. He called the police and told them his story. But when a police officer arrived, he arrested Mike. Why? Unlike other light bulbs, fluorescent lamps don't heat up. Mike couldn't burn his hand. This means he's lying. Let's test your spatial reasoning. Look at this pyramid. Can you figure out how it looks from above? The third option is correct. What about this figure? The second image is the correct one. Now look at this colorful cube. How does it look from above? The fourth variant is correct. Jennifer worked as a manager in a large supermarket. One morning, she received a strange text message. There's a thief among your customers. Beware. Jennifer ran out of her office and saw three people who looked suspicious. Can you find a thief among them? It's this guy. If his arm was really broken, he wouldn't be able to carry a basket. Take a look at this pattern. Can you find two identical butterflies? They're over there. Relax and take a look at these pictures. Choose the lighthouse you like most. This simple test will help you discover some of your curious personality traits. If you've chosen the first lighthouse, you're an optimist and a very strong-willed person with a warrior mindset. You manifest your best qualities during hard times. You have both confidence and power and generously share your light with those around you. The second choice is the choice of warm and lighthearted individuals. People feel comfortable and safe around you. You're so cute that it's simply impossible to stay angry at you. You overcome difficulties using the power of love. You believe in yourself and in other people, and they feel your support even from a distance. If you've picked the third lighthouse, you're a very grounded and practical person. You rely on your own strength and prefer hard and honest work. But keep in mind that asking for help is not a crime. And if you like the fourth lighthouse, you're a very passionate and creative person. Your emotional intelligence is exceptionally high. Sometimes the world around you can make you feel overwhelmed. Expressing your emotions through journaling and art will help you reach inner balance. Can you find two similar dogs? Here they are. Take a look at these pictures and choose your favorite moon. If you've chosen moon number one, you're a very independent person. You might feel guilty when you ask for help. That's why you prefer solving problems on your own. But does it make you happy and fulfilled? If you've opted for moon number two, you live in the moment and chase joy and adventure. But deep down, you might be suppressing the desire for a stable life. 
Maybe it's time to admit that you're tired of your lifestyle and accept your true needs. If your choice is number three, you're a natural leader. You're talented, smart, and passionate. Unfortunately, subconsciously, you try to block your desire for freedom and independence. It might help if you ask yourself, what responsibilities really bring me joy? And the fourth option is the choice of a very picky person. You're very smart and loyal, but you're not ready to open your heart to anyone. People might think that you're very vulnerable and shy. Maybe it's time to overcome your trust issues and allow yourself to be loved. This pattern is pretty tricky. Can you spot any numbers? It's 82,175. Can you spot any numbers hidden in these symbols? That's right, it's 95,738. Rachel was lying on the bank of a mountain river. Suddenly, a stranger ran up to her and grabbed her bag. Then he jumped into the water and disappeared. Rachel couldn't swim, so she called a police officer. When Rachel finished telling her story, the thief was already on the other side of the river. But the officer called Rachel a liar. Why? Mountain rivers are very fast. The stream would have carried the thief much further down the river. Look at this picture very attentively and find two identical giraffes. Here they are. Can you find the correct shadow? It's over there. Look at these pictures very attentively. Can you spot five differences? Their gloves are different, as well as their skates. The snowman on the left doesn't have a pom-pom on its hat. Their scarves have a bit different patterns. And finally, the snowman on the left has two buttons, while the guy on the right only has one. A dangerous criminal ran away from the police. The detective saw him enter a scientific research center and followed him. They found only three people inside the building. All three claim to be scientists working on a secret research project. Look at these people. Can you figure out which one is the criminal? Each of these scientists has a badge with a photo on their lab coat. And only this guy's photo doesn't match his face. So he's probably the criminal. A strange accident happened during the Olympic Games. Unknown sources claimed that instead of a real athlete, one of the countries had sent a robot to the running competition. Take a look at these two athletes' shoe prints. Can you figure out which prints belong to a robot? The third runner is the robot. Only his footsteps are perfectly symmetrical. This brief personality test will help reveal your current mood. Take a look at these pictures. Choose the one which attracts you most of all. If you've chosen the first one, you're probably trying to reach a compromise in a difficult situation. No worries. Your diplomatic skills and big heart will help you bring back peace. If you've picked the second road, you're craving adventure and intense emotions. 
Trying new hobbies and unusual activities will help you bring bright colors to your life. If you like the third route, you're probably a sensitive and romantic person, craving for a happy and loving relationship. Make sure you've set healthy boundaries and remember to love yourself first. And if you've chosen the fourth road, you're probably overwhelmed with stress and obligations. Meanwhile, your true nature is asking for comfort, solitude, and relaxation. You're the headmaster of a fun sciences school. Today is the final day of the semester. You have to handle all upcoming problems and make sure all the students will pass the difficult exams. All teachers except for the professor of memology are waiting in their classrooms. You walk through the school corridors, greet the students, and go to your office. You have a separate drawer where you put all the keys to all the school doors. You throw the office key there, sit down at the table, and notice that some documents have disappeared. Someone has stolen the answers to a video games test. But how did they get into your office? The door and windows were closed. Take a look at the ventilation gate. It's slightly open. Apparently, one of the students broke in there early in the morning. Your secretary is knocking on the door. You say that you're busy and ask to come later. Then, you sit down at your computer, open YouTube, and watch funny videos. The internet signal disappears. Someone has turned off the electricity at the school. You go to the basement with generators. There, you see a turned off switch and three people standing next to it. They all say they didn't touch anything, but one of them is lying. The janitor says the lights went out when he came here to clean up. Louise is a new student. She says she was lost in the building and accidentally got here. Richard is a last year graduate. He came here to find a miniature toy horse, a souvenir he hid many years ago. Which one of them is lying? The janitor has a bucket and mop, so he's not lying. You see a horse in the corner of the room, so Richard is telling the truth. Louise is a liar. She said she's new, but it's the end of the semester. She can't be new at this time. You're the headmaster, and you would know in advance if there was a new student at your school. Louise admits she turned off the electricity to disrupt the sleep science exam. You turn the power back on and go to the dining room to have breakfast. You order coffee, sit down at the table, and meet an angry chef. He says that one of the students poured a bag of sugar into a pot of soup. You're looking around the room. Who do you think did this among all these guys? They all have deep plates with soup and spoons, but this guy has a plate with a fork. He wouldn't eat the soup because he knew it tasted disgusting. You finish your coffee and head to the office. You walk through a long corridor and see graffiti on a huge photo of a crazy dog, a mascot of the school. The guard catches three students. One of them must have ruined the image. Can you guess who did it? Here's a guy hiding his hands. Indeed, there are traces of paint on them. You're walking through the internet history room where an exam has just started. There's silence in the audience. Students are writing a test, but one of them is cheating. Find them. Look at this girl. A wire stretches from her sleeve to her ear. Someone is giving her the right answers through her headphones, and that guy is looking at the answers written on his leg. Someone activates the alarm. All students run out of the school. You make sure that everyone is outside. You head to the exit and notice there is no flame anywhere. You can't even smell the smoke. Someone turned on the alarm to disrupt the exams. You catch three students. One of them is guilty. But who? Alex says he was in the toilet when the panic started. Amanda was taking a meme test. Luke was sleeping in the dining room. Which one of them is lying? Amanda turned on the siren. The memeology professor isn't there, remember? So she obviously wasn't taking that test today. You go outside and meet the school gardener. He says that someone has cut the roses in the schoolyard. 
the gardener saw three people who could be suspects. You bring them into the yard and ask about roses. Lewis says he was in the library all day. Mary was taking an exam on internet history. John was training at the gym. Which one of them is lying? Look at Lewis. His sleeves are torn. Roses have thorns. He probably damaged the shirt when he was cutting the flowers off. You pass by the dining room and hear some strange noises. Someone is obviously tired and breathing heavily. You look inside and see two guys at the table. They're arm wrestling. One of them looks angry and aggressive. He's shaking his hand and trying his best. The other is calm. Who do you think will win? The guy on the right. He holds onto the edge of the table and doesn't waste his strength on unnecessary movements. He will defeat the angry opponent. You enter the trends room. You heard a lot about this subject and a young teacher who has a unique approach to the science of popularity. She tells you that she has asked all her students to create a new profile in the social network for their pets at the beginning of the semester. Now, all the students must show the number of subscribers and likes. The one who has the most popular profile will get a high score on the exam. Students show photos of their pets, mini pig, hamster, cat, goldfish, chameleon, dog, goose, hamster, raccoon. All the photos are pretty popular, but two of them are fake. Which ones? The hamsters. Two students have identical photos. They must have found those online. You're observing a pseudo-philosophy exam. The teacher gives blank sheets of paper to all students. Then he says, There's a lot of supposedly philosophical phrases on the internet that seem too pretentious, obvious, and stupid. People love to attribute quotes to famous persons that they never said. So there's a person who can say anything that can be true or false. They can say both good and bad things, and no one in the world can prove that this person didn't say that. The authorship of this person is unquestionable. Who is this person? After five minutes, the students give back their papers. They all have names of famous athletes, scientists, billionaires, and entrepreneurs on them. No one has passed the exam except for one girl. She wrote just one word. Which one? Anonymous. You walk around the school and hear someone screaming. Several students are running away from the biology classroom. They say a poisonous snake has escaped from the terrarium and now it's crawling in the room. It's too dangerous to have lessons here. You call the rescuers, but to catch the snake, you need to find it. Look around carefully and find the reptile. Take a look at the picture with snakes in the far corner of the room. One of these snakes is real, as its tail goes beyond the painting. Your next problem is in the parking lot. The professor of magic tells you that someone has punctured a tire on her car. Apparently, one of the students took revenge on the teacher for a bad grade on the exam. Fortunately, there's an extra tire in the trunk. But here's the problem. You don't have four bolts to attach it. How can you help the teacher? Unscrew one bolt from the other three wheels and attach them to the new one. Each of the three wheels has three bolts now. That's enough to get to the nearest car service. You come to your office to take a nap, but hear a sudden cracking noise. You find pieces of glass in the yard. Someone has broken a window on the third floor with a stone. You need to figure out who did this among three suspects, a cook, a gardener, and a student. The cook says he was in the kitchen making burgers. The gardener claims that he was watering the roses in the garden. The student says he was sitting in the library at the time. Which one of them is lying? The gardener. One of the students has cut those roses, remember? So the gardener didn't have any roses to water. Finally, the day is coming to an end. All students have passed their exams and are going home. 
You walk through a long corridor and hear a knock. Several people are stuck in the gym and can't get out. They've lost their keys, and the door only opens from the outside. You need to help them, but where can you find the keys? You have the drawer in your office with the keys to all the school doors, remember? You unlock the gym. Then, you finally sit in your office and watch YouTube. You have solved all the problems. You deserve a good rest now. Tyler is on his way to visit his grandma. She lives on the opposite side of the village. It's her birthday, and he wants to give her the cakes that he has prepared. Unfortunately, there are seven bridges that Tyler needs to cross to get to her house. And there's a mermaid under every bridge. The mermaids always require payment from those who cross their bridges. Before Tyler can cross the bridge, he has to give the mermaid half of all the cakes that he's carrying. But since the mermaids are kind, each of them will give one cake back to Tyler. How many cakes should Tyler take from home to make sure that Grandma receives exactly two cakes? Two. Tyler will have to give half of his cakes at each bridge, but he'll still get one cake back. If Tyler takes two cakes from home, he'll manage to stay with two cakes after every bridge. Will is going on a jungle trip for one day. He asked his wife to pack something to eat, something to drink, and something to help him stay warm. When Will opened his backpack, he found just one thing. Can you guess what it was? A coconut. Will can drink coconut water. He can also eat the coconut meat. And finally, Will can use the coconut peel instead of wood to warm himself up. Nina decided to play a quiz game. She kept asking the same question to everyone she met. And each time, she got a different answer. Can you guess what the question was? The question that Nina asked was, what is the time? Take a look at this picture. Can you predict which tank will fill first? Tank 5. The connection between tank 5 and tank 2 is blocked. So the water will move into the fifth tank from the first one but it won't go to tank 2. Therefore, tank 5 will fill up first. What about this complicated structure? Can you tell which of the tanks will fill first? Okay, here's the explanation. Tank C is pretty tricky because it's blocked on the right side. So, the water will move to tank J. And now, it will move to the right and go through tank L. At this point, it seems pretty obvious that tank H will get filled first. But that's wrong. It's blocked as well. So, the correct answer is tank F. There is a wide field of corn. A fox finds its way into the field and starts running. Can you find out to which point the fox can run into the field? The fox can only run to the middle of the field. After that midpoint, the fox will actually be running out of the field. Stacy is a weather forecaster. It's raining today at 11.57 a.m. Can you help her figure out the chances of sunny weather in 72 hours? The chances are zero. In 72 hours, it'll be nighttime. How is a fly different from a mosquito? A mosquito can fly, but a fly cannot mosquito. 
This is Rick. And these three ladies are Melanie, Meg, and Millie. Melanie loves strawberry ice cream. Meg loves blueberry ice cream. And Millie hates ice cream. Can you find Rick's wife among these women? It's Meg. She has a matching ring on her finger. Ice cream preferences don't really matter here. 1.5 guys eat 1.5 burgers in 1.5 hours. How many burgers can 9 guys eat in 3 hours? More hours mean more burgers. And more guys mean more burgers. The time was doubled to 3 hours, and the number of people rose 6 times. Therefore, the number of burgers will be 18. Take a look at this arrangement. It consists of 15 matchsticks. How can you remove exactly 6 matchsticks to make 10? Here's the easiest way. Frank is a grandfather. His grandson is about as old in days as his son is in weeks. The grandson is also as many months old as Frank is in years. The sum of their three ages is 140 years. How old is Frank? Can you guess? To solve this riddle, we need some calculations. Let's say the grandfather is A, the son is B, and the grandson is C. Since the total age is 140 years, we can make up the following equation. A plus B plus C equals 140. Also, the grandson is about as many days old as the son is in weeks, which can be expressed in this equation. 365C equals 52B. And finally, the grandson is as many months old as Frank is in years, so 12C equals A. Now we can put this information into one big equation and calculate the final result. 12C plus 365C divided by 52 plus C equals 140. 624C plus 365C plus 52C equals 7280. 1041C equals 7280, so C equals 6.99. Since the task said that the grandson was about as old in days as his father in weeks, we can round up that number to 7. Therefore, Frank is 84 years old, and his son is 49. If you multiply all the numbers on your phone, what number will you get? zero. Remember that multiplying any number by zero always results in zero. Jerry and Sarah went hiking to celebrate their anniversary, but only the wife returned from the vacation. She went to the local police office and said, Jerry got lost in the woods while I was sleeping in our tent. The sheriff arrested her, saying, I've talked to your travel agent. We suspect that you're involved in Jerry's disappearance. Sarah didn't inform anyone about the trip. Why did the agent and the sheriff decide that she was guilty? Sarah bought only a one-way ticket for her husband and a round-trip ticket for herself. It means that she was sure that she would be returning alone. Can you tell which of the following statements is true? One statement here is false. Two statements here are false. Three statements here are false. The second statement is true. Thirteen caves are arranged in a circle in an enchanted forest. Each of the thirteen caves has treasures and gems. 
Every day, the cave's guards can move the treasure to an adjacent cave or can keep it in the same cave. Meanwhile, every other day, treasure seekers visit the forest and have enough time to enter any two caves of their choice. How can the treasure seekers make sure to find the treasure in the minimum possible days? One of the treasure seekers should move clockwise every day. And one of the treasure seekers should move counterclockwise. This way, they'll find the treasure in a minimum of seven days. Alice was sitting in her hotel room. Suddenly, she heard a knock on the door. She opened the door and saw a creepy woman standing outside. The woman said, Oh, I'm really sorry. I thought this was my door. Then she walked through the corridor to the elevator. Alice didn't know the woman. She locked her door and called the hotel security. Alice asked them to arrest that woman. Why did the woman seem suspicious to Alice? If the woman thought the room was hers, she would have used the keys. But she knocked on the door. Alex, Amy, Allie, and Austin got trapped in a jungle. There's a bridge that can lead them back to the city safely. But the bridge is very old and dark. It can handle only two people to pass through. Also, the family has only one flashlight to move through the dark. Alex takes one minute to cross. Amy takes two minutes. Allie takes four. And Austin takes five minutes. How can they all get to the other side in the minimum possible time? Here's what they've got to do. Alex and Amy should go first. It'll take them two minutes. Then Alex should spend one minute going back to Allie and Austin. Now Allie and Austin should take the flashlight and cross the bridge. It will take five minutes. Then Amy should come back to Alex. At this point, they've already spent 10 minutes. And now Alex and Amy will have to spend two more minutes crossing the bridge. And this is how all of them will reach the other side in 12 minutes. Stephanie is a college professor. A supervisor will be visiting her class tomorrow. The supervisor can ask the students any questions. They can be either easy or difficult. Stephanie will still have the right to decide which student will be giving the answer to each question. Stephanie wants to leave the best impression. What instruction should she give to her students to maximize the chances of receiving a correct answer for each question? Can you help her? This task is pretty easy. All Stephanie needs to do is to ask all the students to raise their hands on every question. But those students who know the right answer should raise their left hand. And those who don't know the right answer should raise their right hand. This strategy will help Stephanie to get only correct answers. The supervisor will also be impressed because all the students will raise their hands. Molly and Polly are twins, but only one of them is a real police officer. Can you tell who? Molly. There's a camera filming Polly because she's an actress. King Victor wants to find a perfect husband for his daughter, Princess Jessica. That's why he offered Arthur, who wants to propose to Jessica, this simple game. He gave the guy 50 gold coins, 50 silver coins, and two empty bowls. Then the king said, Put these 100 coins into these two bowls. You can divide them any way you like as long as you use all the coins. Then I will blindfold you and move the bowls around. After that, you can choose one bowl and pull one coin out of it. If the coin is gold, you will marry my daughter. But if the coin is silver, you'll spend the rest of your life in jail. Can you okay. help Arthur raise his chances to marry Jessica? He should place one gold coin in one bowl and the rest of the coins in the other bowl. 
this way, he'll begin with a 50-50 chance of choosing the bowl with the gold coin. But even if he chooses the other bowl, he'll still have almost a 50-50 chance of picking one of the 49 gold coins. So this strategy will give him a 2 and 3 chance of getting engaged with Jessica. Josh is at his first job interview. The interviewer, Nancy, decided to check his logical thinking and offered him this task. You have a large tank of water and three buckets, with a capacity of four, eight, and ten gallons, respectively. You have to measure three gallons of water precisely using these buckets. How will you do it? Can you help uh -oh. Josh pass this test? It's impossible. The interviewer asked Josh to measure three gallons, which is an odd number. But she offered Josh the buckets that only fit an even number of gallons, 4, 8, and 10. So he can't be precise in his measurements. There was a doctor with curly hair who lived on Fifth Avenue. One day, the doctor's brother got married. What's the family relationship between the doctor and the groom? Keep in mind that brother is not the answer you need. The doctor with curly hair is the sister of the man who got married. Jim met this pretty woman in his favorite park. After having a pleasant conversation with her, he asked, What's your name? She told him that her name was hidden on the license plate of her car. Here it is, WV733N. Can you figure out the woman's name? Look at the symbols upside down. The lady's name is Neelam. A kind-looking elderly woman came up to Mia in a restaurant. The woman said, You look exactly like my younger daughter. We argued and haven't been speaking for many years. Could you do me a favor and say goodbye, mother, with a smile on your face when I leave? Mia felt very sorry for the poor woman and agreed. So she said, Goodbye, mother when the old woman left. Soon after that, oh, no. Mia got the biggest shock of her life. Can you guess what happened? A waiter approached Mia and gave her the elderly woman's bill. The woman had assured the waiter that her daughter would pay for her meal. Oh, no. Nancy took Josh to the office kitchen. Can you see anything weird on the table? Take a look at the electric kettle. Min and Max are on the opposite sides. Look at this cute little rabbit rotating the gear. Can you predict which mark the arrow will point at? Number one or number two? The second, the gears in direct contact will always rotate in opposite directions. There are 40 elephants, and they have 44 heads. How can this be possible? It's a play on words. The 40 elephants have 44 heads. Get it? Kate and Pam are liars. They both lie on specific days. Pam lies on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. She speaks the truth the rest of the time. And Kate lies on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. As for all other days, she speaks only the truth. Can you figure out that one day of the week when both Kate and Pam can say, tomorrow I'll lie? It's Thursday. Let's suppose that any girl is telling the truth when she says, Tomorrow I'll lie. She will have to keep her promise and lie the next day. But if her statement was false, then she'd have to speak the truth the next day. Anyway, in each case, the girls will have to change their behavior the next day. 
Now, it's pretty clear that Kate can only say that on Thursday or Sunday, and Pam can say that on Monday or Thursday. So, the only day which fits the conditions of the riddle is Thursday. I'm huge on Sunday and Saturday. I'm small from Tuesday to Thursday. I don't exist on Monday and Friday. What am I? The letter S. Mike is a famous treasure hunter. He is stuck in a cave with four doors. Unfortunately, each door hides some serious danger. The room behind the first one is filled with ice. Anyone who enters it gets frozen in seconds. There are two hungry sharks waiting behind the second door. The third door opens to a room filled with the world's most poisonous gas. And the fourth door leads to a room filled with giant magnifying lenses that increase the heat from the sun. Anyone and anything that enters gets burned in no time. Uh Uh-oh. Can you help Mike escape? He can get away through the fourth door at night when the sun goes down. Bobby needs to crack a secret code using the following clues. One of the numbers is correct and is placed in the right place. Nothing is correct. Two numbers are correct, but not in the needed position. One number is what we need, but it's not in the correct position. One number is okay, but not put in its right place. Uh Have you figured it out? Let's begin with statement 2. We can exclude 0, 3, and 2 from the final code. Now, according to statement 3, we can conclude that numbers 1 and 8 are correct. Statements 1 and 4 help us to learn that 9 is in the final code, and it comes third. Now it's time to identify the right places for 1 and 8. Let's take a look at statements 3 and 5. 8 can't go third because this place is already occupied by 9, and it can't go first because it contradicts the third condition. So, the correct code is 819. Take a look at these matchsticks. There are five identical squares. Can you form six identical squares by moving just three matchsticks? Keep in mind that you're not allowed to let them overlap or break the matchsticks. Here's the way. Take these three matchsticks at the bottom and place them vertically in the center of the squares in the middle row. Voila! Now you have six identical squares. Several robbers locked Fred in a room. The room is almost empty. There's a piano with notes, a calendar, and a waterbed. The room is locked from the outside. Can you guess what Fred ate and drank and how he escaped from the room? To crack this riddle, you definitely need to think outside the box. Fred ate the dates on the calendar, got water from the waterbed, and used a piano key to escape. Fiona can eat 27 chocolates in an hour. Alex can eat 2 chocolates in 10 minutes. And Kitty can eat seven chocolates in 20 minutes. How long will it take them all to eat a large box of 120 chocolates? Two hours. In one hour, Fiona eats 27 chocolates, Alex eats 12, and Kitty eats 21. The total is 60 chocolates. Therefore, It would take them all two hours to eat all 120 chocolates. I'm soft and cuddly, which soothes your heart. But if you pick my last name, Uh I'm going to tear you apart. What am I? I'm a teddy bear. There are two sand hourglasses. The small one can measure 5 hours, and the large one can measure 7 hours. 
How can we measure 16 hours with the help of two hourglasses running together? First of all, start both hourglasses at the same time. Five hours later, flip over the small hourglass. Then wait for two hours and flip over the large hourglass as soon as it finishes its first seven-hour cycle. When the small hourglass finishes the second cycle, this will mean that 10 hours have passed. At this point, the large hourglass will have been running for three hours. So now, you should flip over both the small and large hourglasses. This way, you'll make the large hourglass run for three hours. When the large hourglass finishes its three-hour cycle, this will mean that 13 hours have passed. Now, flip both the small and large hourglasses over again. When the small hourglass runs out of sand, it will mark another three hours. You've just measured 16 hours, and the mission is accomplished. Can you guess which color should be added to the top of this tree? The number of letters and the names of these colors gets reduced by one in every next row. Scarlet is made up of seven letters. Orange and yellow have six letters. Green, brown, and black contain five letters. Gray and blue have just four. So, the missing color should be made up of three letters. For example, red. Amy entered her favorite fast food place to get some fries. She saw these four people inside. Can you tell who's not poor? The first lady has a fake Gucci bag. This gentleman has a patch on his jacket. The third woman has threads sticking out of her suit. And the fourth guy has a bunch of expensive gadgets. So he's definitely not poor. Take a look at these matchsticks. Can you find a way to make three squares by moving just four matchsticks? Here's the right way. The accountant says, The attorney is my brother! But the attorney claims he doesn't have a brother. Who's lying? Neither. The accountant is his sister. <laughs> Cab driver Bobby was moving in the wrong direction on a one-way road. A police officer was standing nearby and noticed the driver, but he didn't stop or find Bobby. Why? Because Bobby was going on foot. We've never mentioned that the cab driver was driving the cab, so this makes perfect sense. Bobby arrived at the local car service. He decided to give his car three coats of paint. Can you guess which coat would go on first? The second as it's the only coat that can go on the first coat. The mechanic told Bobby, Hey bro, I'm gonna give you a discount if you manage to crack my riddle. So listen carefully. They are the five precious gems of an everyday sort, and all can be found on a tennis court. What are they? Can you solve this mystery? And the correct answer is the vowels, A, E, I, O, and U. Bobby was having a cup of tea when he called the waiter and told him that there was a fly in his tea. The waiter took away the cup and brought another one. But two seconds later, Bobby called the waiter again and said, Hey, that's the same cup of tea. How did he know? Bobby had already put sugar in his tea.
Bobby's friend Bill joined him during lunch and offered a bet. If you solve my riddle, I'm going to pay for food. But if you fail, you're the one to pay. Bobby liked riddles and agreed. <laughs> yes, Bill put some matchsticks on the table and said, OK, here's the task. I've arranged matchsticks in a grid so that the first and second row, as well as the first and the third columns, contain 12 matchsticks each. Can you remove four matchsticks and rearrange all the remaining ones so that we're still left with 12 matchsticks in the first row, the second row, the first column, and the third column? Can you help Bobby save some cash? Here's the solution. Bobby went to the restroom after lunch. Unfortunately, the door got locked automatically. Now Bobby needs to enter a password to get out. He found this hint hanging on the wall. A word I know, six letters it contains. Subtract just one, and 12 is what remains. What am I? Can you crack the code? The correct answer is dozens. Bobby was visiting a historical museum. He entered the wrong door and got stuck in a creepy dungeon. There, he found a sufficient supply of buckets filled with food, medicines, and drinking water for a week. But Bobby didn't want to stay there that long. He searched for ways out and found these three doors. A hungry bear and a cub are hiding behind the first door. The second door leads to a wall of fire, and the third door leads to a lake filled with crocodiles. Can you help Bobby choose the right door? The bear will try to protect the cub, even if you offer them all of your food. Swimming through a lake with crocodiles is also a bad idea, but Bobby can distract the crocodiles with food and use water from the lake and the bucket to fight the fire. So, he should choose the second door. Bobby found out that his favorite rock band was playing a private concert for VIP clients in a luxury club. He decided to sneak inside the club through the backyard. But unfortunately, Bobby faced a strict guard behind the door. He refused to let Bobby in without a password. Can you help Bobby figure out the password? Take a look at the guard's t-shirt. It's a Rebus. The password is to infinity and beyond. Bobby's friend Mike is an expert on paranormal activity. He invited Bobby for ghost hunting in a creepy old hotel. Their equipment indicated strong signs that a ghost was hiding behind one of the four doors. Each door has an inscription. The sign on door A says, it's behind B or C. Door B says, it's behind A or D. Door C says, it's in here. And door D claims that the ghost isn't here. Mike's psychic powers have told him that three of the inscriptions are false and one is true. Can you guess which door leads to the ghost? Door D leads to the ghost. Why? Well, if the ghost is behind door A, then both B and D are true. If the ghost is behind door B, then both A and D are true. If the ghost is behind door C, then A, C, and D are all true. But if the ghost is behind door D, then the statements on all the other doors are false, except for that on door B. This matches the rules. Mike was standing on a 100-foot, 30-meter ladder. He slipped from the ladder and fell to the ground. But after the fall, he was absolutely fine and not injured. How could that be? Mike was standing at the bottom of the ladder. 
Bobby's friend brought him to a round desert island by helicopter and left him there. Bobby wanted to spend some time alone, but something went wrong. He met a lonely lion. Bobby and the lion are standing on the island that measures one unit in radius. Both of them can effortlessly run at the speed of one unit maximum. Let's suppose that the lion is very hungry. Will he be able to eat Bobby? And if yes, how long can Bobby survive on the island? There are two possibilities. If Bobby decides to run on the perimeter of the island, the lion will eventually catch him. And here's the second possibility. Bobby doesn't run on the perimeter. This way, he will be using an escape strategy that will work for an infinite time. So, Bobby should probably choose the second strategy and just wait for the helicopter to come back and pick him up. Bobby and his friends went on vacation to a country house. But unfortunately, it was raining heavily. It kept raining for 13 days. When it rained in the morning, the afternoon was beautiful and clear. And when it rained in the afternoon, the next day was blessed with a clear, nice morning. Overall, the guys experienced 11 nice mornings and 12 nice afternoons. Can you find out the total number of days they spent in the country house? The correct answer is 18. And here's why. Let's call clear afternoons X, clear mornings Z, and no rain period O. This equation represents the number of days with rain. X plus Z equals 13. And here are the days with clear mornings. Z plus O equals 11. And this equation represents days with clear afternoons. X plus O equals 12. If we solve these three equations, we'll learn that X equals 7, Z equals 6, and O equals 5. So, the total number of days is 18. Bobby started his morning by jogging around a park near his house. When he returned, he faced very unpleasant news. Someone had stolen his cab car. He questioned three people standing nearby. Henry said, Sorry about your car, bro. I've been playing video games for 24 hours. I haven't seen anything suspicious because I didn't leave my basement. Rosie said, I'm a gardener. I've been planting daisies in the public area all morning. I think I saw a suspicious man who opened the cab car using a knife. Jack said, I saw your car when I went out for groceries, but when I returned home, it was gone. Who's lying? Rosie. She said she planted daisies, but there are only rose bushes in this area. Police officer Frank received an anonymous text message. It revealed an address where Frank could find one of the most dangerous criminals. The police went to check the area. They didn't know what the criminal looked like, but they knew that his name was Dirty Jack, and he was inside the house. The police busted in on a carpenter, a truck driver, a mechanic, and a fireman. All were playing poker. Without any hesitation or communication of any kind, they arrested the fireman. How did they know that he was the criminal? The fireman was the only male in the room. The rest of the poker players were women. Dirty Jack wanted to escape from prison and found three possible ways out. The first exit is guarded by hungry dogs. The second exit has a tricky trap. A cage will fall from the ceiling and catch anyone who steps on the floor in this room. And an angry guard is hiding behind the third exit. No prisoner can escape from him. Which door should he choose? The second one. He can throw his boot to activate the trap and then just walk around it. Dirty Jack got out of prison 
and found himself in the middle of the ocean. He landed in a cave underwater and got trapped. Stones are hanging above him, and he has only two options to escape. A huge jellyfish is waiting on the first path, and a hungry shark is waiting on the second path. Which way should he go? Dirty Jack should choose the second option. Take a closer look. This shark has a go vegan tattoo. Therefore, it won't hurt a human. So he can easily climb up through the hole in the cave above and escape. What will be the resulting figure if we fold this open cube? The correct answer is A. Adding large numbers in your head when you don't even have a piece of paper can be difficult. I have a method for you that will make it way easier. Just make all the numbers you need to add a multiple of 10. Let's take two three-digit numbers as an example. 543 plus 339. Uh -oh. Even adding these numbers on paper can be challenging, but rounding them up will make it much more manageable. In this case, 543 is rounded up to become 550, and 339 turns into 340. Now, adding these two is not much of a problem, so let's do it. 550 plus 340 equals 890. Cool, but that's not the answer to the original equation. To determine that, we need to remember mm -hmm. how much we added to the initial numbers. That would be easy. We just need to subtract the original numbers from the rounded up ones. The results look like this. 550 minus 543 will be 7, and 340 minus 339 will be 1. Now add 7 and 1, and you'll get 8. That's how much extra we have in our rounded up sum. So the only thing left to do now is subtract 8 from 890, and you'll get your final result. 890 minus 8 is 882, and the answer is 543 plus 339 is 882. Finding any percentage hmm? that can be divided by 5 of any number using just your head is actually no big deal if you know your times tables well enough. Say you hmm? see a 5% discount to something you want to buy in a store, and you'd like oh. to know the exact amount of money you're going to save. Let's count. Let's assume your purchase without the discount is $142. You need to determine 5% of that sum. First, move the decimal point left by one digit, which would give you 14.2. Now, divide this number by 2, and you'll get 7.1, which is also the answer to your question. The principle is hmm? simple. Finding 10% of any amount is easy, because you only need to move the decimal point left by one place, which we did in our first step. And 5% is 10% divided by 2, right? So, that's why we divided the resulting sum by 2 as well. Finding any percentage that's a multiplier of 5 can be done in a more or less similar way. Let's take 35% of 324 as another example. Again, move the decimal point left by one place, getting 32.4. Now, you need to do two different actions with this number. First, multiply it by 3, which will get you 97.2. Second, divide the same number by 2, resulting in 16.2. And now, all that's left to do is add these numbers. 97.2 plus 16.2 equals 113.4. That's your answer. 35% of 324 is 113.4. Let me explain in case you hmm? didn't get all these calculations. First things first, you divide the number by 10 and move the decimal point left. Then, you need to multiply your number by 3.5. It's not easy to do it in your head, so you separate the numbers before and after the decimal point. First, you multiply your number by 3, and then by 0.5. To multiply any number by 0.5, you actually need to divide it by 2, since 0.5 is half of your number. And then, when you're done with all the multiplications, just add the results to get your initial number multiplied by 3.5. This might sound complex at first, but if you practice this method a bit, 
you'll find it very easy to apply. Now let's get away from complex calculations and have some fun instead. You've been told otherwise, but you can prove that uh -oh. 2 plus 2 might actually equal 5. Here's the simplest method to do so. Uh, disclaimer, don't try to do this in your math class. So, we have the universal truth that 0 equals 0. Now, 0 can be a result of subtracting a number from itself. Let's take numbers 4 and 10 for our case, and we'll have this equation. 4 minus 4 equals 10 minus 10. Taking it one step further, 4 can be written as 2 to the power of 2, and 10 can be written as 2 times 5. In the end, we get this equation. 2 to the power of 2 minus 2 to the power of 2 equals 2 times 5 minus 2 times 5. Next, in math terms, we can simplify it by using brackets, and here's what we get. 2 minus 2 times 2 plus 2 equals 5 times 2 minus 2. Again, according to the rules of math, we can cancel 2 minus 2 on both sides, and the result will be 2 plus 2 equals 5. Yeah, that's how you prove the impossible. Math can do incredible things. Hmm? Okay, getting back to real math tricks. Squaring numbers after 10 can be a pain, but there's an easy way to square any two-digit number that ends in 5. Let's take 45 as an example. First, you need to multiply the first digit by itself plus 1. That is, 4 plus 1 is 5. So you need to multiply 4 by 5, getting 20. Now add 25 at the end, and you get 2,025. That's it. Here's your answer. 45 squared is 2,025. Check it with a calculator if you don't believe me. Hmm? A simple way to multiply any, and I mean any at all, number by 5 has probably never been mentioned to you at school. There's a slight difference in methods depending on whether the number is even or odd. Let's start with even numbers. Say you have to multiply 3,566 by 5. First, divide the number by 2 getting 1,758. Now add a zero to it, and you've got your answer. 17,580. Now let's try odd numbers. We'll take 2,463 as an example. First of all, subtract 1 from the number, getting 2,462. Now divide it by 2 again, resulting in 1,231. And then, instead of a zero, put a 5 at the end which will get you 12,315. This is your answer. 2,463 times 5 equals 12,315. Hmm? All right, all right. Now I've got a puzzle for you. See if you can solve it in 10 seconds. You have an equation made of matchsticks, which reads 2 equals 6. You need to move just one matchstick to make the equation true. The timer is set. Again, this is a puzzle, so there's no conventional solution to it. If you move one matchstick from the left side and put it so that its middle is on top of the one on the right side, you'll get a square root symbol. And thus, the equation is true. One equals Woohoo! the square root of one. Ah, but there's also a second solution. You can move one of the matches forming a V in the right part so that they form an X instead. This way, you'll get 11 written in Arabic numerals that equals 11 written in Roman numerals. Problem solved. Let's have another math riddle, shall we? A book costs $1 plus half its price. How much does the book cost? I'll give you 10 seconds again, or just pause the video if you need more time. To solve this riddle, you need to build an equation where b is the cost of the book, and you have to find it. The equation will look like this, b equals 1 plus b over 2, because to find b, you need to add 1 and half the b. 
To make it simple, let's write b as b over 2 plus b over 2 in the left side, getting b over 2 plus b over 2 equals 1 plus b over 2. Now we can transfer b over 2 from the right side over to the left and get b over 2 plus b over 2 minus b over 2 equals 1. Subtracting b over 2 from itself leaves us with b over 2 equals 1. So the only thing left to do is multiply 1 by 2. And you'll get b. The answer is b equals 2. Now, if you solve this puzzle on your own, you just might get to Oxford University. In the finals of a logical game, two players are contesting for the prize. The prize itself is placed under one of five objects you can see on the screen. Sheila was privately told the shape of the object under which the prize was hidden. Colin was privately told the color of that object. Both players are mathematicians and use perfectly logical reasoning to find the answer. And either of them knows that the other was told the shape or the color of the object. The host asks them, do either of you know where the prize is? The players say, no. The host then asks, do you know now? They both shake their heads. The host asks again, do you know now? And the players answer, yes, in unison. How can this be? And where is the prize? Pause the video if you want to try to crack this puzzle on your own, or watch further to find out the answer. So Sheila was told the shape of the object, so for her, it would be either the red or green triangle, either the green or purple circle, or the only square there is, the red one. Colin was told the color of the object, so for him, it's either the red triangle or square, either the green triangle or circle, or the only purple circle there is. When the host asked whether either of them knew where the prize was, and they answered no, they both got new information. For Sheila, it was definitely not the square, and since Colin didn't know the answer either, it wasn't the purple circle. Colin used the same reasoning, so they both eliminated two options. After the second question, neither of them still knew the answer, and they got new info again. Sheila was left with two triangles and one circle. She knew the shape of the object, so if she still didn't know where the prize was, it couldn't be the circle and Colin was left with two green and one red shape. Since he knew the color but didn't know the answer, it couldn't be the red one. Thus, two more objects were eliminated for both. And finally, after the third time the host asked them about the prize, they knew for certain that it was the green triangle, using only their initial information. During a visit to an antique store, Rachel found a peculiar piece of gold. It turned out that the man who brought it to the shop mentioned it had once belonged to a pirate named Captain Benedict Jameson. He said he had hidden the rest of his treasures on an island. The map was hidden inside a cave that was located on a beach on the same island, but no one has managed to find the treasure yet. Rachel was intrigued, so she called her friend Jeremy and convinced him to set sail there to search for this treasure. After weeks of sailing, they arrived at the island and looked for the cave first. Can you spot it? Here it is. Three different paths within the cave led to the map. Which one should they choose? Notice the blinking eyes of a wild animal waiting for its prey in the shadows of the second path? There is a rather large spider web blocking the third path. That must only mean there's a large spider that made it. So, the safest option is the first path. They arrived at the end of the cave and found three wooden boxes. Each had a different map on it. Only one map will lead them to the treasure. Which map should they choose?
The area that the first map shows is surrounded by trees. The second map shows an area surrounded by the ocean. The area on the third map is surrounded by mountains. So, since they're on an island, they should choose the second map. On the back of the treasure map, they found a message written by Captain Benedict himself. Congratulations, traveler. You've picked the correct map. Now you're a step closer to finding the rest of my wealth. But I warn you, the journey ahead won't be simple. You'll have to solve every riddle that I have for you. And only then will you be able to find my treasure. According to the map, they had to enter the forest. Captain Benedict left another riddle on the map about it. My friend will accompany you from here on, but first, you have to find the tree that it lives on. Look for a fruitful palm tree. If you try to bite the fruit I'm talking about, you'll break your teeth. I guarantee. Take a look around. Which tree do you think that the captain is talking about? Some of these trees don't have any fruit at all, so none of them can be the tree the captain mentioned. These trees have bananas on them, but you won't break your teeth if you eat bananas. Then it must be this tree with coconuts, because you'll definitely break your teeth if you try to bite a coconut. When they got closer to the tree, they noticed an engraving on it. It said, Look up and find my friend Jonathan the monkey. Take him with you on your journey, because he knows where I hid the key. Then Rachel and Jeremy looked up and saw three monkeys. Which monkey do you think Jonathan is? Notice that the third monkey is holding the same piece of gold as the one Rachel found at the antique store? This guy must have access to the treasure, so he must be Jonathan. Rachel and Jeremy tried taking Jonathan with them, but he refused to even move. How do you think they can convince Jonathan to come with them? Luckily, there's banana trees around, so they should just give him a banana to gain his trust. Jeremy wanted to climb one of the banana trees to pick a banana, but they were all very tall, and it seemed impossible to climb any of them. However, Rachel suddenly burst with excitement after seeing something that would help Jeremy. What did Rachel see? Take a closer look at the trees. One of them has an old rope ladder attached to it. Jeremy can climb up there to get a banana. After Jeremy had picked a banana, Jonathan the monkey got down from the tree to get it. While he was eating his banana, Rachel and Jeremy felt hungry and decided to take a break to eat something too. However, when they reached for the food in their bags, everything was gone. Can you guess what happened? Did you notice something strange as Jeremy was climbing the tree? Let's rewind a bit to show you what happened. The monkeys were stealing all the food from Jeremy and Rachel's bags. Rachel and Jeremy had nothing else to eat other than the bananas off of the trees. But when Jeremy tried to climb up the rope ladder again, the rope broke. Now that they wouldn't be able to pick any bananas, they had to find something else to eat. They walked around and came across a waterfall. Rachel suggested that they catch some fish. Jeremy then caught three different fish, but only one of them was safe to eat. Can you tell which one? They should eat the first fish because the second fish has spikes on it, so it's not suitable to eat. The third fish isn't real. It's electronic. It has small cameras instead of eyes. They fell asleep after eating, trying to figure out where the electronic fish came from. The next morning, when Jeremy woke up, he realized that Rachel was gone. Then, 
they heard a man's voice. Jeremy couldn't figure out where it was coming from, but Jonathan the monkey pointed to the electronic fish. The voice said, I have your friend. Answer this riddle of mine if you want to see your friend again. There's a one-story house in which everything is green. Green walls, green doors, green furniture. What color are the stairs? Since it's only a one-story house, there aren't any stairs in it. Suddenly, the waterfall stopped flowing and the cave appeared behind it. The voice said, Enter! Inside, an evil scientist was waiting for Jeremy. He said that he was going to give him a chance to save his friend. He took Jeremy to a water tank with three different creatures in it. The scientist said, One of these creatures is Rachel, but the other two are not human at all. I will free your friend if you can guess correctly which one she is. Take a closer look at the second creature. There are definitely human legs covered with seaweed. That must be Rachel. The evil scientist set Rachel free, but didn't let them leave the cave just yet. He showed them three gates. If they choose the right one, they'll be free to go. Behind the first gate, hundreds of poisonous snakes are waiting. Behind the second gate, there is a vicious vampire. Behind the third gate, there is a pack of hungry wolves. Which door should they choose? They should choose the second door. It's morning outside. The sun is shining bright and vampires can't survive the sun. After Rachel, Jeremy, and Jonathan got free, they got back on the trail following the map and arrived at the side of a cliff. There were three different bridges in front of them from which they could walk across to the other side. Which bridge should they choose? The wooden bridge looks very old. It won't be able to hold their weight. Even though the metal bridge looks sturdy, it's very narrow and it has no railings. They might lose their balance and fall. So, they should choose the glass bridge. As they continued their journey, they walked into a swamp without noticing and they got stuck in it. There were three ropes hanging from a tree with which they could pull themselves out. Which rope should they choose? The first and the third rope are no ropes at all. One of them is a snake and the other is a tiger's tail. So they should choose the second rope. After they saved themselves from the swamp, they were finally able to make it to the last destination that was marked on the map. There was a trap door in the ground. They had to go through it, but it was locked with a five letter combination padlock. However, Captain Benedict left a clue on how to unlock it in his notes, and the clue was 3, 8, 5, 19, 20. What do you think it means? Each number represents its respective letter in the alphabet. The third letter of the alphabet is C. The eighth letter is H. The fifth letter is E. The nineteenth letter is S. And the twentieth letter is T. So the passcode is the word CHEST. Once they opened the door, they saw a staircase leading to an underground room. When they entered it, they found three different chests. Only one of them holds the treasure. Which one is it? Can you see the ants coming in and out of the first chest carrying small pieces of food? And a sticky, slime-like substance is oozing from the third chest. It must be filled with whatever that is. 
But there is a golden reflection coming from the second chest. That can only mean the gold is in there. They left the room with the treasure chest. However, the chest was locked, and the map didn't have any more notes or directions on it. Jonathan started pulling Rachel's shirt as if he wanted to say something. Then, she remembered Captain Benedict's previous note. My friend Jonathan the monkey knows where I hid the key. So she and Jeremy started following Jonathan. They arrived at a beautiful garden with three statues. Each statue was holding a key. And only one of them would open the treasure chest. Which one should they choose? Take a closer look at the treasure chest. The lock of the chest has a little emerald on it. The first key has a ruby on it. The second key is decorated with an amethyst. And the third key has an emerald on it. Since it matches the lock, this must be the key they should choose. These three handsome young men are brothers, identical triplets. Sam, he's very honest and he always tells the truth. Bob always lies, and Alex is unpredictable. Sometimes he lies, but sometimes he tells the truth. Amy is the brother's old friend. She visited them after many years, and she could barely recognize who was who. Amy asked the guy who was sitting on the left, which brother is sitting in the middle? The answer was, oh, that's Sam. Amy then asked the brother in the middle, what's your name? And the reply was, I'm Alex. Then Amy turned to the brother on the right and asked, Who's that guy in the middle? The brother replied, it's Bob. Those answers confused Amy because she had asked the same question three times and received three different answers. Can you help her figure out who is who? Sam always tells the truth, so the brother on the left cannot be Sam because, otherwise, he wouldn't be able to call someone else by his name. The brother in the middle cannot be Sam for the same reason. So the brother on the right must be Sam. And since we know he always tells the truth, the guy in the middle is Bob, and the brother on the left is Alex. Both Bob and Alex lied to Amy. No wonder she hasn't seen them in years. Daniel lent $100 to Alex, one of the three triplets. Sometime later, Daniel wanted to get his money back. One morning, he meets one of the triplets not far from his house. Daniel can ask him a three-word question. Sam always tells the truth, while Bob and Alex always lie. What question should Daniel ask? The right question would be, are you Bob? Here's the list of possible replies the guy can give. If it's Sam, he'll say no. If it's Bob, he'll also say no. And if it's Alex, his reply will be yes. That's why if Daniel hears yes, he can ask for his money. Sam, Bob, and Alex bought some chocolate candies. Sam gave Bob and Alex as many candies as they already had. Then Bob gave Sam and Alex as many candies as they already had. And finally, Alex gave Bob and Sam as many chocolates as they already had. Now, each of the brothers has 24 candies. How many chocolates did they have in the beginning? At first, Sam had 39 candies, Bob had 21, and Alex had 12. You can solve the riddle this way. Have a look. Bob leaves home and turns right three times. He wants to return home, but he's scared of Sam, who's wearing a mask. What's going on here? The guys are playing baseball. Sam wants to cross the Sahara Desert. This risky journey will take six days. But unfortunately, one man can only carry enough food and water for four days. Can you calculate the smallest number of other people that will need to help Sam carry enough food across the desert? Two.
two people. Let's suppose that Sam's brothers, Alex and Bob, agree to help him out. Never mind that Bob always lies. By the end of the first day, they'll have enough food for 9 days. 4 plus 4 plus 1. Now Alex can head back home with a 1-day food package. Meanwhile, Sam and Bob can continue their journey with an 8-day package. By the end of the second day, the total food supply will reduce to 6 food packages. Now Bob can grab enough food for 2 days and go home. At this point, Sam will still have a 4-day food package to fulfill his dream. Sam met a genie in the middle of the desert. The genie said, Hi, I'm Leo. If you solve my riddle, I'm going to fulfill your wishes. But if you fail, you'll serve me till the end of infinity. Deal? Well, Sam agreed. Here's the riddle. It's not alive, but it grows. It doesn't have lungs, but it needs air. It can't be washed, but it's never dirty. What is it? Can you figure it out? The correct answer is fire. First of all, Sam asked the genie for some cash. Nine rare and priceless gold coins appeared in front of the guy. Leo gave Sam balance scales and said, These coins look absolutely identical, but one of them is fake. The fake coin is lighter than the rest. What's the smallest number of weightings you'll need to find the fake coin? The correct answer is 2. First, Sam should divide the coins into three equal piles. Then he should place a pile on each side of the scales, leaving the remaining pile of three coins on the ground. If the scales remain balanced, It means that the six coins on the scale are real and the fake coin is in the third pile. But if the scales do tip, Sam will easily find out which pile contains the fake coin. Spoiler, the pile which is lighter. Either way, he should put six gold coins aside and leave only the lightest pile. Then he can use the same method to find the third coin, by putting one coin on each side of the scales and leaving the third one in his hand. Sam was hungry, so he had one more wish, to have dinner. Leo began frying some fish in a pan that could only fit two fish at once. It takes five minutes to fry one side of a fish. What's the shortest time Leo needs to fry three fish in one pan? Fifteen minutes. Leo should put two fish in the pan and fry them for 5 minutes. Then he should take one fish out and then turn the other one over. After that, Leo should start frying the third fish. He should fry both fish for 5 minutes. The first fish will be ready, so he should put it away on a plate while turning the other over. Now, he should put the half-fried fish back in the pan and fry two fish for 5 more minutes. Voila! All three fish are now ready. Sam left the desert and decided to stay in this little village to get some rest. He wanted to get a haircut and a shave after his long journey. There were only two barber shops in this village. In the first shop, the barber was handsome with a neat haircut. He was well-dressed, and the place looked tidy and clean. Meanwhile, the barber from the second shop was shabbily dressed. His hair was cut in a weird way, and his clothes had stains from last night's dinner. His place didn't look clean at all. Which barbershop should Sam go to and why? Since there are only two barbers in the village, it's obvious that the tidy barber must have his hair done by the other, and the second barber must have used the services of the first man. Therefore, Sam should choose the barber from the second shop because he's more professional. Two business partners, Rick and Frank, met in a restaurant. It was a hot summer day, so they ordered cold mint tea with ice. Rick gulped down five glasses of this drink during lunch. Meanwhile, Frank managed to drink only one glass. Soon after that, Frank fainted and fell to the floor. Doctors diagnosed severe poisoning, but Rick was feeling completely fine. The police found out that both glasses contained poison. How did Rick who had drunk five glasses of this tea, avoid any consequences. (laughs) 
Rick survived because the poison was in the ice cubes. He drank quickly, and the ice had no time to melt in his drink. As for Frank, he drank his tea slowly, and the ice melted in his drink to poison it heavily. You pronounce me as one, but write me as three. You can't read this riddle without me. What am I? The correct answer is I. Bob bought a parrot from a pet shop and put it in a beautiful silver cage. The seller warned Bob that this parrot could give birth every two months, and it can deliver up to five babies at a time. How many parrots will Bob have in a year? Just one, because he only bought one bird, not two. I'm always trapped in my glass cage. I'm usually found at the bottom of the cage. If I climb higher, I get hotter. If I climb down, I get cooler. What am I? The correct answer is a thermometer. A father is locked up in jail. His wife has gone bankrupt. Their son has to sell his hotel in order to gain some money. Yet their daughter doesn't care and is happy. How can someone be so heartless? The family is playing Monopoly, and the daughter is winning the game. We've arranged 10 coins on a table this way. Altogether, they form a triangle pointing upward. Can you invert the position of the triangle and make it point downward while moving only three coins? Here's the easiest way to do it. Just move these coins as shown. I'm always ahead of you, yet you can never see me. What am I? Tomorrow. Can you spot your name in this alphabet soup? Oh, there it is. Rosie and Melanie are having an argument. Rosie yells, I'm part of this club, let me in! And Melanie replies, Leave right now, you're not a member of our club. Can you figure out who's lying by just looking at this picture? Both ladies have club tattoos, but Melanie's tattoo is slightly different from the club's logo. Therefore, her membership must be fake. Anna runs a chocolate factory. She offers all her clients a special deal. Anyone can exchange five chocolate wrappers for one chocolate bar. Robert spent two weeks collecting the wrappers and managed to find 77. Yeah! Can you tell what maximum number of chocolates he can get from Anna? Robert can get a total of 19 chocolates. Here's how it works. First of all, 77 wrappers can be exchanged for 15 chocolates with two wrappers left. After unwrapping the new 15 chocolate bars, Robert will be able to exchange 15 wrappers for three more chocolates. Now he can use the remaining two wrappers and the new three wrappers to get one chocolate bar. 15 plus 3 plus 1 equals 19. Oh, yeah. Henry is an astronaut from Earth. He landed his spaceship on another planet in an unknown galaxy and began to explore the city and its citizens. Very soon, Henry felt a desperate need to go to the restroom, but when he saw these two doors leading to the ladies' and gentlemen's bathrooms, he got really confused. The problem is that Harry doesn't speak the local language, and he can't ask which door is for men and which is for women. Thankfully, he met a local guy, Mo, who could understand English. But he can speak only his native language. What two questions should Henry ask to figure out the right door? Hmm. 
he should point at one of the doors and ask, Is this the men's restroom? Then he needs to remember Mo's reply and ask, Am I a man? If Mo says the same word, then the restroom Henry is pointing at must be for men. And if Mo says a different word, the restroom is for women. There were nine candies in a box. Nine people took nine candies, but one candy is still in the box. How can it be possible? It's pretty simple. The last person took a candy and the box. This way, one candy remained in the box. Hmm. On a cold night, four friends were roaming around the neighborhood. At one point, they tried to get under one umbrella, but the umbrella was too small. However, all four of them managed to stay dry. How can that be possible? It's possible because it wasn't raining. Meet Erica and Jim. Do you have any idea why he pushed her? Because they're shooting a movie. Do you see that cameraman reflected in the window? Billy organized a betting game for his friends. According to the rules, he will place two candies, one yellow and one red, in a dark box. If the player picks the red candy, they will get $5,000. But if they pick the yellow candy, they will have to pay $500. Unfortunately, Billy's a liar. He put two yellow candies in the box instead of one yellow and one red. Billy's friend, Wendy, watched the players losing the game one by one. But when it was Wendy's turn, she won $5,000. How did she do it? She picked a candy and, without showing it to anyone, ate it. Then she picked the remaining candy, which was yellow, and showed it to everyone. Billy had to admit that the first candy had been red. Otherwise, everyone would find out he was a liar. Nina went speed dating and met three handsome guys. The next day, each of the guys asked her out, Can you help Nina make the best choice? Brad didn't even ask the girl if she wanted to go to the restaurant or not. Besides, he's pretty rude and bossy. She barely knows Rob. It's not safe to go to his place alone, so Nina should choose David. He looks nice and polite. Hello. Amy has two strings. The only thing she can say for sure is that when you light one end of either string, it takes exactly one hour to burn. Can you help Amy measure 45 minutes with the help of the strings? She should light both ends of the first string and one end of the second string. In 30 minutes, the first string will have burned completely. To measure the remaining 15 minutes, she should light the second end of the second string. When it's fully burned, we'll know for sure that 45 minutes have passed. Adam is a famous opera singer. He's going to perform for the king and queen for seven days in a row. In return for his work, they should pay him one-seventh of a gold bar per day. Adam doesn't accept prepayments. He requires a daily payment, which is one-seventh of a gold bar. What's the fewest number of cuts they should make to be able to pay Adam each day? Just two. Here's how it works. Day one, cut one-seventh of the gold bar and give it to Adam. Day two, cut two-sevenths of the gold bar and give this piece to Adam. He'll give you one-seventh of the bar back. Day three, give the singer the one-seventh piece you received the previous day. Day four, give Adam four-sevenths of the gold bar, and he will give you the one-seventh and two-seventh pieces as change. Day five, give Adam the one-seventh part of the bar. Day six, give him the two-seventh piece and get the one-seventh one as change. And finally, day seven, give Adam his final one-seventh piece of the gold bar. Jenny and Sam arrived at a picturesque campground. They had to set up a tent. There were three good spots, in the forest, in the field, and near the lake. Which place should they opt for?
The best option is to choose the field. Wild animals live in the forest. As for the lake, look, a zombie is hiding in the bushes over there. Probably not the best neighbor. George was walking down the street. Suddenly, a wizard popped out of nowhere and teleported George to his castle. He offered the guy to choose between these three doors. There's a hungry tiger behind the first door. There's an angry dinosaur behind the second door. And the room behind the third door is filled with toxic gas. Which door should George choose? The second one. Dinosaurs went extinct millions of years ago. Jerry has an apple tree. The number of apples on his tree doubles every week. After 30 weeks, the tree is completely covered with fruit. Can you guess how many weeks the tree needs to get half covered with oranges? Oranges don't grow on apple trees, but if I asked you about apples, the answer would be 29 weeks. Because, as we know, the number of apples doubles every week. In the ocean, there's an island. On the island, there's a house. In the middle of the house, there's a glass of water. Inside the glass of water, there's a coin. What's in the middle of the ocean? The correct answer is simple, the letter E. Harry went to a party. He liked these four ladies. He wanted to talk to one of them. Which one should he choose? Take a look at the first lady's hand. She's a zombie. The second lady has a vampire bite on her neck. She can turn into a vampire any minute and ruin the date. And the fourth lady is a ghost. So Harry should go and talk to the third lady. Hello. Detective Thomas received a call from Holly. She said, Please come over. I got robbed. It happened so fast. I left my purse in the backseat of the car. When I stopped at the traffic light, someone opened the door and snatched my purse. Detective Thomas hit the road and rushed to the crime scene. But when he saw Holly, he realized that she was a liar right away. How? Holly has a two-door car. How could a thief steal something from the back seat? There are three houses. One of the houses seems very weird. Can you tell which one of them looks suspicious? Look at the footprints. They lead to and from houses one and three. So people come and go from those houses. As for the second house, the footprints only lead in one direction, inside. People come in, but they never go out. Take a look at this messy floor. Can you count the number of laptops that you can charge with the help of these extension leads? The cord of extension lead 3 is torn. As for the second lead, one of its outlets is broken. Extension lead 4 has only one outlet, which makes the entire thing pretty useless. And extension lead 6 doesn't have any cable at all. Now let's see what we can do about it. Connect extension lead 1 to the wall outlet. Then connect extension lead 2 to extension lead 1. This way, you can use two outlets from the first extension lead to charge two laptops. One outlet of extension lead 2 can be used to connect the fifth extension lead. And one of them is useless anyway. Now we can use two outlets from extension lead 2 and all four outlets of the fifth extension lead to charge six laptops. So the total number of outlets in use will be eight. Simple. Danny and Diana are spouses. They jog in the park every morning. To match every two steps Danny makes, Diana needs to take three steps. If both of them start with the right foot, how many steps would they make before their left feet are in the front at the same time? They'll never reach that goal. Here's how it'll go. I'm a five-letter word under you. Remove the first letter and I'm above you. Remove the second and I'm around you. Who am I?
Well, have you managed to crack this riddle? It's a chair. Great job! Look at these two people. Can you guess which one of them is just dressed up and is not a woman in reality? It's this one here, the one in the pink dress. Look closer. She's blonde, but has dark hair on her arms. Also, you can see some naturally dark hair slipping under the wig. Okay, let's try to find some more imposters. There are two pregnant women. Can you tell which one isn't really pregnant? It must be this one. She has a big belly, but her choice of high heels is very questionable. Look at these two. One of them is a mummy that escaped from ancient Egypt. Don't ask me how, it doesn't really matter. Just find the mummy. What's your choice? It's this one. Look at the ankle. There's a piece of bandage slipping out of the pants. Dira came to a hospital for an x-ray. Two doctors are ready to accept her, but one of them isn't a real doctor. Take a close look at them. Who's not a real doctor here? It's this man here. See, he looks nothing like the person in the photo on his badge. He must have stolen the uniform. Mrs. Cook left for a business trip and three of her daughters stayed at home by themselves. When Mrs. Cook returned the next day, she found her car crashed. Obviously, one of her daughters had taken it and had crashed it by accident, but none of the three took the blame. Sage said that she hadn't left the house. Leora said that her friend had picked her up for school that day. Amaya said that she had taken the bus. Who crashed the car? Look inside the car. There's a purse. If you were attentive, you could have noticed that the day Mrs. Cook left, Amaya had this purse. So it was her who had crashed the car. Naya woke up on a Saturday morning after a long and hard week. She was very hungry, so she decided to make herself breakfast. Naya had a dozen eggs. She broke three eggs, fried three, and ate three. How many eggs are left? There are nine eggs left. Naya broke, fried, and ate the exact same three eggs. Esme was walking through the forest and got lost. After hours of wandering around, she found a witch's house. She walked in, pet a cat, and asked the witch to take her home. The witch was making a new potion and asked Esme to give her a plant from the shelf. Esme walked there, but there were five of them. Which one? she asked. Not the one right in the middle, and not the smallest one. Also, don't take the one that's next to the pink flower. So, which one does she need? That's the one on the very left then, or the pink flower itself. But in that case, wouldn't the witch just say so? Probably. She seems satisfied, so Esma is going back home this time. Mova was in a local park and noticed a purse. Someone must have forgotten it, so she took it to Lost and Found. They accepted it and said they would give it back to the owner. At the end of the day, three women came in and demanded the purse back, each stating that the purse belonged to them. Take a look inside the purse and decide to whom it really belongs. Look, there's lipstick in the purse. There's just one woman who's wearing lipstick of the same color, and it's this one. So the purse must belong to her. Let's stick around in Lost and Found for a while. There are more things to give back to their owners, like this wallet, for example. There are three people claiming that it belongs to them, 
but which one is the real owner? Look, there's an ID card. It has a photo of this guy, so it must be his wallet. There's a backpack, and three people are demanding it. You can take a look inside. Who do you think the backpack belongs to? There's a jacket that matches this girl's trainers perfectly. It must belong to her. Can you pick the owner of this purse out of these three people? Look, there's a charm on the purse that says Ella. This girl in the middle has a necklace with a pendant saying Ella too. It must be her purse. Yvonne and Liana are exploring a forest right outside their town and find an abandoned hotel. Of course, they walk in to look around. When they walk into one of the rooms, a cage falls and traps them inside. There are three potions. Each of them will only last 10 minutes. If they drink the purple one, they will turn into the first animal they can see. If they drink the blue one, they'll be able to fly. If they drink the orange one, they'll switch bodies with each other. Which potion should they drink? Look, there's a little mouse in the room. If they drink the purple potion, they can turn into a mouse and will be small enough to escape through the cage. What they do afterward is another matter. Inez was studying in a boarding school. She often stayed in the library till late because, well, she didn't want to spend time with her roommates. One day, she found a dungeon. Of course, she walked in to see what was there. She found a pile of old books and a journal filled with weird symbols. Can you help her decode the name of the person this journal belongs to? For each letter, there's a unique border and dot combination. To decode, Inez just has to find the respective letter. If she does it right, she should get the name Marion. A group of friends were partying on a Friday night in a neighborhood. The next morning, Mr. Johnson came to his little shop and found that the glass door was broken. Nothing was stolen, but he reported to the police because he wanted the glass replaced. The police found fingerprints of three people on the bottle, Nova, Ayla, and Eamon. Which of the friends threw the bottle into the glass door? It was Eamon. His fingerprints are upside down and are located on the bottle's neck. This means that he wasn't holding the bottle to drink, but upside down to throw it. A group of cyborgs arrived on Earth to study humans' behavior. The police found out about it and got concerned. They want to track every cyborg and interrogate them. Let's help them find a couple of cyborgs in disguise. Look at these two people here. One of them isn't a human. But which one? It's this guy with a tail. He wasn't careful enough to dress up properly. Here's another pair. They both seem pretty usual, but one of these women is a cyborg. Can you spot her? It must be this one. Her eye color is orange, which is not humanly possible. Look, there are two suspicious people in the grocery store. Oh no, there's just one cyborg. Which one? It's this one, the one with the cyborg's leg. Oops, he forgot to cover it up. Then the police moved on to different houses. One officer took a look at these two houses today. In which house does a cyborg live? Look, there's gasoline on the kitchen counters. It's definitely a cyborg's place of residence. You're doing great. 
Now, look at these two bathrooms. Can you spot anything suspicious and find the bathroom that doesn't belong to a real human? Look, there's a wrench instead of a toothbrush. I bet that's the one. A young actress, Chanel, was staying at a hotel in Miami. Suddenly, she screamed. Detective Callum was drinking a cocktail right by her balcony, so he walked in and asked her what had happened. The girl looked scared. A man dressed in black just broke into my room. I heard some scratches in the keyhole, and then he opened it and grabbed my hand. I screamed, and he ran away. Detective Callum didn't believe her. Why? The door of the room opens inwards, and it's loaded with boxes now. If someone had opened it and walked in, the boxes would have been pushed out of the way. Luna wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing, but her mother didn't let her go. Still, she felt bad, so she said, If you need to get out of your room for a while, you can go visit your grandparents at their geese farm for the weekend. Luna agreed. But she decided to trick her mom. Instead of going to her grandparents, Luna went to the party. When she got home, her mother asked her how the weekend had been. Luna replied that she had a great time, spent a lot of time in the garden, and was responsible for feeding the chickens every day. Her mom knew that she was lying. How? It wasn't a chicken farm, but a geese farm. If Luna had really been at the farm, she wouldn't have confused them. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with